All right, C. Lindelof videos, increasing and decreasing intervals of trig functions for AP Cal. We get this problem, and <clears throat> as I started to work this problem out, I realized, because I looked at somebody else's work, that there are actually two pretty good ways to work it out. The first way is to use something called the product of some formulas of trigonometry, and you can use those. It didn't help me a lot. It's not the way I would have chased this down, but let me just go to this really quick. So we look at this sine x times cosine x plus 5 is our function. And we're interested in finding all the increasing and decreasing intervals from x is greater than 0 and less than 2 pi. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to flip over and let you see this really quickly. We're going to use this product of some formula. All I'm going to do is say this. We have sine. Look, we have sine x, right? Cosine x. So that would equal 1 half sine x plus x plus sine x x minus x. This is a trig formula. We know that sine of x minus x is sine of 0, and sine of 0, if you look at your unit circle, is 0, so that goes away. So we end up being able to rewrite this as 1 half sine, and of course x plus x is 2x. So we can get this pretty quickly. So this is why they chose my writer to decide to write his or her work this way. So they end up giving me this back saying, well, this is one half sine of 2x plus 5 is another way to rewrite f of x. So I'm like, okay, I'll buy all of that. So I start to differentiate this. So I start to differentiate this. And as I differentiate this, I'm going to get one half. First derivative of sine is cosine. Cosine 2x times 2, right? Plus d dx of 5 is 0, isn't it? So what happens here is this. If I multiply this 1 half times this 2, I find that f prime at x is equal to cosine 2x. And of course, to be a critical value of this function, to find out where it's going to increase or decrease, we have to find out where this equals 0. So what I did is I found out when does cosine of x equal 0? And cosine of x equals 0 at pi halves, doesn't it? So I do this and look, okay, when is 2x equal to pi halves? I divide both sides by 2. I get x is equal to pi fourths. I also can look at this function and look here, and I can see, that this is what made this more difficult for me, that the period of this function, remember period is 2 pi over omega, and omega is this value here. So 2 pi over 2 is equal to pi. So every time I go pi, this thing comes back to where it was. So I'm going to add pi here. And pi is pi 4 is 4, 4 pi fourths, isn't it? 4 pi fourths. And pi fourths plus 4 pi fourths equals 5 pi fourths. So, so far I have x is equal to pi fourths, x is equal to 5 pi fourths, but also just naturally if I look at this picture here, I see that cosine is 0 at 3 pi fourths, right, because this is the cosine value on the unit circle, 3 pi, so 3 pi halves, so I have to go and take that into account also, and I have to say here, or, right, here, or, 3 pi halves. So I'm going to do the same thing here. 2x equals 3 pi halves. Multiply by each side by 1 half. Get x is equal to 3 pi fourths, right? 3 pi fourths plus 4 pi fourths, because every time we go pi, we do one whole revolution. In this case, because our period is only pi, pi fourths is equal to 7 pi fourths. And 7 pi fourths is less than 2 pi, right? Because 8 pi fourths is 2 pi. So now we have all of these values. So we have pi fourths, 5 pi fourths, 3 pi fourths, and 7 pi fourths. So these are all the values where, where the slope of this function goes to 0. And every place in between those places we have... A, a negative or positive slope. We have an increasing or decreasing interval. 
So I went to here, and from here I started to just pound this out, and I put in. Some people say, well, what values would you check? I would find trigonometric values that I know that are between those two. Right? So as I check this, I got f prime is greater than 0. Conclusion, this is increasing. Here, f prime is less than 0, therefore it's decreasing. And I went all the way across, and you can do the, the same thing. So I hope this is really helpful to you. If you don't mind, in my next video, I'm going to do this exact same problem, but I'm going to do it the, the way I would have done it. Uh, because the author of this uh, paper that I'm, I'm reading uh, is, quote unquote, an expert, and and they decided that they would use this product to sum formulas. And I'm thinking to myself, what would happen if you didn't know that? How would you pursue it? Are you just stuck if you don't know that? And you're not stuck, but you have to think trigonometrically, if that's a word. So, hey, thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions, let me know. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do. Thanks.